We're going to turn now to Donald Rumsfeld. He was America's youngest and oldest Secretary of Defense, a Congressman, White House Chief of Staff, corporate CEO, and that remarkable career, including his controversial stint at the Pentagon under President George W. Bush, is all covered in his new memoir, Known and Unknown, which comes out today. Sir, thank you for coming in for your first live interview. Thank you very much. And I do want to start with Egypt. You've known President Mubarak since June 1975, 46 years Mm -hmm. almost met with him several times. What kind of man is he and what should he do now? He was a young Air Force officer and uh, President Sadat, when he succeeded um, uh, Nasser, selected him as his vice president and he was not known and uh, of course after President Sadat was assassinated by the uh, extremists in his country, Mubarak uh, became president. And uh, Time to go? Well, What our interest is, uh, is having that country evolve towards freer political and freer economic systems. Uh, In in fact, that's true of the whole region. How they get from where they are to where they have to go is is something that I think probably is best handled through private diplomacy rather than public diplomacy. But where's the greatest risk? Is the greater risk that he or his regime holds on with so many of his own people hostile to him or that a new, even if elections produce, a new regime that is more hostile to American interests? Well, I don't know that that's the either or that exists. I think there's a better course and and my my guess is that he is behaving, To my impression is that he's behaving in a way that he understands that he eventually is going to depart. But you wouldn't push him. And uh, that the goal is to have the popular feeling that you can sense in the uh, uh, in the movement that's taking place uh, actually end up in freer political and freer economic circumstances rather than a very small radical extremist group taking over as we saw in Iran. Mm-hmm. Let me move on because he said something I know you disagree with. He believes that the Iraq war was a, a huge mistake, that it allowed, gave Iran great power in the region. His words were he allowed Iran to breathe. I do know you disagree with that, but you concede in the book that the Iraq war came at a very high price. I want to show up for our viewers some of that price, 4,400, more than 4,400 American deaths, 32,000 wounded, over 100,000 Iraqi civilians killed in the low estimate by the Congressional Budget Office of a cost of $700 billion. And I, sir, I've read the book, I've read the reviews, I watched your interview with Diane, and it seems like the one question that most people want answered is the one you most don't want to address. What responsibility do you bear for those costs? Well, of course, everyone involved in that administration uh, bears a responsibility for the conduct of our government's uh, actions during that but period. But you were Secretary of Defense. What, Indeed. What's your responsibility? Indeed. Well, it is, as I say, it, it is that I was a participant and we believe the intelligence was correct. It turns out that it was not completely correct, although the inspectors did go in and determine that Saddam Hussein did in fact have the capability of fairly rapidly reconstituting his chemical and biological they capabilities. They also believe that they needed a lot more time. They were in Iraq at that time and they believe that the invasion at that moment was unnecessary. I'm referring to Delfer and the Delfer report after. I'm talking about Hans Blix and the inspectors, mm-hmm, okay. Mm-hmm. But is that, that is true, isn't it? They wanted more time. Well, they, they, how many resolutions had there been? There had been something like 17 rev- resolutions at the United but Nations. But you had inspectors in the country. Why was it necessary to He had thrown that? them out for about the second or third or fourth time. And he was contained? They well, wanted not to complete at all. Their work. The imp- implication that Saddam Hussein was in the box, that it was a terribly vicious regime. And there's no question but that the world is better off today than if Saddam Hussein and his regime were still in power. But could it have been done? The millions of people in that country have been liberated. They have a chance to to live under a freer system. And and, uh, thanks to the men and women in uniform and to the United States and the coalition countries. But you do go through many of the decisions that were made collectively that you believe. uh, Sure, I do. I talk about them and reflect on them. Some were good, some were less good. But, you, but where you don't go, where you find it difficult to go, or maybe you simply refuse to go, mm-hmm. is the judgment that there was a decision, there were decisions that you made that could have brought that cost down. I saw you talking to Diane last night. President Bush has said that the failure to, reducing the troops too quickly was the most important failure in the war. You said you don't have the confidence to make that judgment. If that wasn't it, what was? Well, 
the the thing that happened more recently in in 2006 was that the Sunnis finally tired of Al Qaeda and the Anwar awakening occurred. Sadr became less uh, belligerent and the development that we were engaged in for the preceding several years of developing and training and equipping the Iraqi security forces when the President Bush decided on the surge clearly it galvanized the political situation in Iraq and it galvanized the political si situation in the United States and it was a very bold and, and good move. That's true but there were many warnings before there that more troops could have helped by the advisors on the ground no, that's not correct. There were, Ambassador I, I didn't, Bremer sent that? That's, that is, that it, it's is correct. correct. Ambassador Blackwell no. made those recommendations. It's well documented. It is not well documented. I don't recall uh, Bremer ever suggesting that until he was leaving office and he raised the question and we sent it to the Joint Chiefs and the Chairman and the Commanders and they looked at it and came back and said no. They th feel that's the right number. Ambassador Blackwell made that re representation to the National Security Council in September of 2003, I believe, with Ambassador Bremer sitting right beside him. It's documented in Bob Woodward's book. Bob Woodward wasn't there. So you're saying it didn't happen? I'm saying I don't remember what you're talking about. I do remember that, if, that, that the question was raised repeatedly. Uh, do we need more troops? Do we need fewer troops? Where do we need them and what ought they to be doing? That question was raised in the National Security Council with the President, with the members of the Council, with the combatant commander, with the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And the way you characterized it is not quite right. You said they were reduced. In fact, they were not increased. We had something like 450,000 troops prepared to go in with off-ramps. So they did not go in if the combatant commander felt they weren't needed. Even in 2006, when President Bush finally decided to send in more troops, in December 2006, you had a memo where that recommendation was below the line. So can you now concede that what Senator McCain said last week was correct, that had you stayed in office, there would have been defeat in Iraq in the surge. Oh, no, place. absolutely not. We, McCain and I are not a good fit. <laughs> I think that is the understatement of the decade. But why is it so difficult, sir, for you to say, this is the mistake I made, this is what we should have done different, this is what I'm sorry for. I think for. in the book we talked about that. I, I mentioned it. I wrote that in the book. That, that that may very well be one of the things that should have been done differently. I will say that, that during that period, I asked the question repeatedly, should we have more troops? Should we have fewer troops? Should they be doing what they're doing? Should they be doing something differently? And we constantly dealt with the Joint Chiefs of Staff and the combatant commander, first General Franks and then General Abizade and General Casey. And they, we were in agreement. The President was, the National Security Council was, and the combatant commanders were. Let me were. move on to one final question mm -hmm. on Iraq. It's a remarkable, almost throwaway moment in the book. You describe a National Security Council meeting in October 2003 where you were told that, that Saddam Hussein, according to one report, was paying $60 million for his agents to target the president's daughters and your daughters. What did you think and what did you do when you heard that? Well, of course, the president and his family had Secret Service protection. Uh, my family did not. And it was a uh, somewhat awkward moment in the meeting. Uh, the president, I, th I believe George Tenet, raised that. And he said you had to take it seriously. And said you have to take it seriously because uh, we had killed Saddam Hussein's sons. And, and one ought not to be surprised that, that, a, uh, that kind of activity was being generated in Iraq. There was not much I could do. And, and I, uh, my, my children did not have protection. And, uh, what did you feel? Concern. But re I'm realistic. I mean, I was standing near F President Ford when he was shot at, and there's certain things that happen in life, and there's not much one can do about it. And uh, so I made a comment that, that thank you or something, and President Bush looked me in the eye and said, you better take this seriously. And, of course, I did take it seriously, but I was also realistic that, that there is not much one can do about that. Mr. Secretary, I wish we had a lot more time to talk. <laughs> Thank you for coming in this morning. And I should say, all the proceeds from this book are going to the families of those killed and wounded Thank in you. the recent war. They are indeed. Thank you for coming in this morning. Thank you.